People always ask me, especially newbies, why do I need correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar? <clears throat> why do I need quantum grammar? Like, what's the point? And I've always struggled with that because I don't have, I mean, I'm not here to sell something. I'm not here to tell you why you need something. Why, why does someone need to, to tell anybody why they need something? As authority of their own construct, as authority of your construct, wouldn't you know why you need or don't need something? Why do you need me to tell you? Um, the way I navigate is I'll look at content, I'll look at things, and I'll, I'll be the judge on my own, whether I need something or not. No one really needs correct sentence structure. But then again, people don't really know what it is. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Like, what correct sentence structure has done for me in my life over the last six plus years. Imagine going into, uh, okay, I don't know how many of you out there have been through the quote unquote court system. Walked into a court and had a situation, a case, whether you were defendant or whether you were plaintiff or whatever it was, a witness, jury duty. Have you seen the process? how it works. Do you understand how it works? Do you know what's going on in there when you look around and you look at like, I'll just say this right off the bat. If you look at a courtroom, keep in your mind what it looks like. Now flip it. And if you've ever been in a church, specifically like a Catholic church, but other churches as well. It looks basically the same, doesn't it? A courtroom and a church. They both look the same. They're very similar. You have pews, right? You have the center of the floor, which would be the well of the court in the courtroom. And then you have an altar. You have different levels on the altar, just like in a courtroom, you have the the stenographer, the clerk, and then on the third plane is the judge. Just like in a church, you have a priest. The priest wears a robe. The judge wears a robe. It's basically the same setup. And you go into a courtroom, somewhere in that courtroom, you will see like a podium or something with a King James Bible on it. Nowadays, they may be taking them out, but Back in the day, they would mostly have a King James Bible in there and the discerning individual would walk up and see what page it's open to. Because a lot of these foreign vessels in dry dock navigate on via ecclesiastical law. Now, whether you believe or don't believe in a higher power, I guess you would call it, whether you do or you don't, doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is these foreign vessels in dry dock navigate according to these things. Um, myself personally, I don't. I navigate with regards to the facts. I think that religion is the single greatest psyop that's ever been successful and perpetrated upon humankind. Get people to believe in something they can't certify and you can get them to believe anything and you can control them. It says swipe right to see comments. Oh my goodness. I'm still getting the hang of this TikTok thing. So people ask, why do I need correct sentence structure? I don't know. Why do you? Uh, the, what galvanized me to learn it back in 2017 was that it, it resonated with me. I had been through the fiction system. I'd seen all the conspiracy theories. And then I saw Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller do a seminar. And I was, I was like really taken with the way he presented things and the way he explained a mathematical interface on grammar. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be something? 
Because as, you know, as bad as the grammar is that's being taught to young people nowadays, grammar is what controls everything. Words control everything. Think about it. If you think or feel something, a word will pop into your head to describe it. Words will pop into your head. They go in and out of your head. If you learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you will become a steward of your words rather than be controlled by them. Why do you think attorneys have to go to school for so many years? And even after they graduate, they still don't know all the language of legalese. They still don't. Why do you think the court system wants you to hire one of their representatives to represent you in their court because you don't speak the language? They have their own language that they send people, that people go to school to learn. Whether you are a defendant, whether you are plaintiff, it doesn't matter. They want you to be represented by someone in their club, the Bar Association. You're not a member. You don't know the language. So you have to hire someone who speaks the language. It'd be like you walking into a foreign vessel and dry dock in, um, let's say, I don't know, I'll just use this as an example. You walk into a foreign vessel and dry dock in Russia and they all speak Russian. You don't speak Russian. You have to hire someone who speaks Russian so that you can get a fair shake in their system. It's the same thing with, you know, with legalese. If you don't speak legalese, you have to hire someone who does because it's all about money. With correct sentence structure, if you learn it and get closure on it, that whole system that they use, you can create your own system. But unlike their system, which is not fair, there's nothing fair about it. If anything, it's arbitrary. Your system, if you learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, is a geometric level plane field. Plane as in P-L-A-N-E, not P-L-A-Y-I-N-G. You create that and you invite people to step up onto the geometric level plane field with you. You have to know the grammar so well that you can actually teach it to someone else on the spot at the drop of a hat. Because just like you walking into a court, they want you to have a lawyer, an attorney that speaks the language, that interprets it. If you don't speak English, in addition to that attorney, they're going to get you an interpreter to interpret the legalese into whatever language you speak if you don't speak English. It works the same way in the correct sentence structure, only you are your own representative. You're your own authority. Therefore, you have to translate it for them. You have jurisdiction over your document contract, postal vessel court venue. That's how it's used. And because no one in the fiction would ever dream of stepping up onto a fair level playing field, they vacate, they leave you alone. They want you out of their world. They want you out of their biosphere. They don't want nothing to do with you. And that's how it becomes, that's how one is successful with this grammar. I've done it multiple times. Amazingly, I think one of the first cases I started with in 2017 or beginning of 2018 was a state tax entity who they said that I owed taxes, all right? And just to throw out an arbitrary number because I don't remember the exact number. 
say I owed like $30 in taxes. In addition to the $30 in taxes, they wanted me to pay $80 in penalties, interest, late fees, so on and so forth. So $30 taxes, $80 penalties and fees. At the time, I did not have closure on quantum grammar, but I tried to use it anyways. So I syntaxed their document, meaning I pointed out the modification in their grammar using the number values of one, two, three, four, eight, and nine, and zero, meaning adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, past tense, future tense, conjunction. And then I wrote a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venue with a syntax key. And I sent it back to him with a check for $30. And I said, basically to translate into plain, simple English, I said, yes, I want to help out the state. I want them to be able to pay the employees for working on the roads, you know, doing maintenance and things like that. I know people need to feed their families. However, I don't have a contract for paying $80 in penalties and fees. Show me the correct contract with correct grammar where I agreed to that. Number one. Number two, in lieu of that, if you can't show me that, then show me your own quo rento that you have the authority to tell me to pay anything. Show me that. Or number three, go on vacation. Within a week, they sent me back a letter saying, everything's done, thank you very much. And they never contacted me again. That tax entity never contacted me again. So I was like, wow, wow. I don't even have closure on correct sentence structure. And I was able to get a state tax entity off of my back that easily. That was crazy. It blew my mind. So then I started using it for other things. I started helping other people out with like collection agencies and things like that. And again, it comes down to knowledge is the first thing you have to establish. If you agree to a contract, you have to honor that. Like a lot of people come at it with the uh, attitude that they want to get out of something. Like I've had people send me emails, Jason, I got a DUI. Can you help me get out of it? And my first question is, were you drinking and driving? Because if you're drinking alcohol or using any like type of mind altering substance and you get behind the wheel of a hurtling chunk of metal, you're a public safety hazard. So that's not going to work. Correct sentence structure is not going to help you get out of a DUI. It's not going to happen. If you are going through a residential area that is 15 miles per hour and you're going 60 miles an hour, correct sentence structure isn't going to help you because you're a public safety hazard. It comes down to do no harm. Now, if you're going... 16 miles an hour down a 15 mile an hour road and a policeman pulls you over and gives you a ticket for going sick, going one mile over the speed limit. And they say, you know how fast you were going? You say, no, that you were going 16 miles an hour. The speed limit's 15 miles an hour. And then you just tell them, well, I wasn't planning on being out that long. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But in, in that situation, it would work because your volition was not to speed and you weren't really going that much faster than the speed limit, right? So your volition was correct and do no harm. So it would work in a situation like that. Or a parking ticket. A parking ticket is the easiest thing to vacate, to get off of your, whatever you want to call it, get out of your biosphere. Unless... You were parking in a private or confidential zone. Like if you 
would come and park in my driveway. And then you get a ticket or whatever, or a citation. Correct sentence structure is not going to get you out of that. It's not going to help you. Because you're parking in a private area. If you see something that's clearly marked private, and you don't have permission to go there, contract is by consent. You're violating that privacy. It's all about contract, folks. It really is. But if you're just parking on a public street on the side of the road and you get a parking ticket because you didn't pay in the meter, come on, man. Correct sentence structure will definitely help you in that situation. And people ask, oh, well, if you do these things with correct sentence structure, will it affect your credit report? To my knowledge, no, it doesn't. It's never affected mine. And I have, for lack of a better term, beaten, you know, collection agencies and things like that using this grammar. But it all comes down to volition. You uh, viewers out there, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. I mean, this chat is, uh, is there for a reason. This filter, you see this right here? The scar goes down here. Uh, when I was in like, uh, I don't know, third grade or fourth grade, I was riding a motorcycle and uh, I lived on a farm. And during the summer, we would have cows on that farm with electric barbed wire fence. And in the winter time, you know, after the, the cows weren't there anymore, my grandfather and father would take down the barbed wire fence in certain places so that you could freely go in and out of the pasture with your vehicle or whatever. And you didn't have to unhook the fence. But then when we got the cows, they would put the barbed wire back on the entrance and then you would have to open it up if you wanted to go in with a, with a motor vehicle. Well, unbeknownst to me, my grandfather had put the wires back up. I didn't know. And I was just flying. And I hit that barbed wire fence right here and I flew off the motorcycle. And, uh, you know, as you can imagine, this big flap of skin, blood was pouring down my face. Um, my, my father looked at, takes one look at me and he says, you better go see your mother. Okay. I wasn't crying or anything. I walked up to the house. My mother opened the door. She took one look at me and she started screaming. And as soon as she started screaming, I started screaming. And then she grabbed me by the shoulders, put me in front of a mirror and showed me myself. And there was this blood everywhere. She's like, look at you. I was like, ah, why would a mother do that? That moment is etched in my mind. And as a parent, you know, my children have gone through some things. Actually, my son has a scar here uh, that he got. He tripped over someone's leg and bounced his head off a brick wall and blood was everywhere. And the adults were screaming and I would just told everybody to shut the F up. I grabbed him and took him to the hospital. You know, I mean, it doesn't help anyone in a situation like that to start screaming and acting crazy. <laughs> but you know, that's another thing about correct sentence structure. You have to maintain your calm and your cool. You have to, uh, be a steward of your breathing. You have to be a steward of the cadence of the way you speak. Someone says, you should cash at me two bucks. Well, TikTok's helpful in that manner that uh, it enabled me to mute that fellow that told me I should cash app them $2 and then also block the word cash app. So I guess that's cool that you can do that. I started a Rumble channel as well. 
started uploading some videos over there. My main platform is YouTube with over 600 correct sentence structure videos over there, which my entire TikTok channel is just little snippets of longer form videos from YouTube and I just upload them here on, on TikTok. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I see these people on here that basically begging for money. They're like, please cash at me $1. And geez, they get 500 people that cash app them a dollar, then they get 500 bucks. That's crazy, right? But hey, whatever, whatever. What is quantum grammar? Quantum grammar is a synonym for the name of a grammar technology known as correct sentence structure communication parsi syntax grammar. Correct sentence structure communication parsi syntax grammar is made up of three elements. It's a grammar technology made up of three elements. And they're all contained in the name correct sentence structure communication parsi syntax grammar. The first element is correct sentence structure communication. That's the part where you hear people saying for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. The second part is par se. Correct sentence structure communication par se. And what par se is, is it's basically the parts of a word, the particles of a word, like the syllables and things like that, where you research through an etymology dictionary and look up the earliest nativity root meanings of the parts of a word so that you can get a sense of what that word originally meant before it was modified, which most words are modified. They've been changed. As the late Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller used to say, change is modification and modification is perjury. Because if you were on the witness stand and you were talking about the facts, and then you color a fact, you change a fact, now you've committed perjury. You've lied by trying to color a fact, put bias into a fact. Let's see if I can give an example of that. Like, say, for example, you're telling a story. Yeah, Johnny Doe was driving his car and he ran over Jane Doe and killed her. That's the story, okay? So now Johnny Doe is going to be charged with uh, drunken driving, I guess, maybe, we'll say. And then someone's telling the story. It's like, well, Johnny was driving, and it was 2 o'clock in the morning. It was dark. He couldn't see. And then someone else says, well... The cops arrived at the scene at 3 p.m. So it wasn't at 2 a.m., it was at 2 p.m. that it happened. So that person that said it was 2 a.m. can be held in contempt because they lied. They colored the fact that it was 2, but they said 2 a.m. rather than 2 p.m. Now that's a goofy example, but it is an example of how a fact can be colored. Just like adverbs can modify verbs, and adverbs can modify adjectives, and adjectives can modify other adjectives, and adjectives can modify pronouns. Pronouns and verbs and adjectives can be fact-based. Adjectives can only be fact-based. Verbs and pronouns can either be fact-based or non-fact-based. Adverbs can only be non-fact based. If you know these things, then you can learn the syntax pretty easily. I got something I can show you. Hold on a minute. I'll be right back.
So if I'm going to travel, like travel, travel, I always bring my briefcase. I have to. The briefcase has my ship's papers in it. This is my claim of the live life. Okay. I created this. I didn't buy it from anyone. I'm the authority of my own vessel. As you can see down here, I am the copyright copy claim holder of this. If you have a live life claim and someone else's name is in the copyright copy claim section, someone else owns you. But as you can see here, I have the, all of this is certification of who I am. It's got a little mini dictionary. And this is what the back of it looks like. Notice on the back where I've broken the boxes where I've written in correct sentence structure. And I've also autographed over that bullet stamp and thumb printed it as postmaster. And if you want to say it, you know, postmaster, judge, bank banker, letter carrier, all that stuff. This is my grammar auditor document contract court authority claim. This in the fiction, this would be equivalent to a judge's oath. Okay, but I choose not to word, use the word judge because judge is a fiction term and I don't want to use anything like that that has to do with the fiction. Authority is fine. And that's what this is. What else we got here? We got uh, my fate writ volition claim. Where, you know, you'll, you'll hear me say that volition is the most important thing. And then someone says, well, what is your volition? Here you go. It's in correct sentence structure. All written out. My volition. This is my port authority claim. I am the port authority of this port. This port is a live life claim. I'm sorry. This port is a live life claim, the port of sensation. And I am the authority of that. This is my language tutor claim. This is a domicile contract which I've translated into plain, simple English on the back. I created this on December 29th of 2020, when all that goofy medical lockdown bullshit started happening. I created this and I filed it into the local law enforcement to let them know the terms and conditions of this domicile. And basically it just says that the occupants, not the occupants, the people who dwell in this domicile follow these terms and conditions, meaning we are all knowledgeable enough to self-diagnose whether we're ill or not ill, whether we want to wear a diaper on our face or not wear a diaper on our face, whether we would like to get foreign substances injected into us or not. This gives closure to that. Not only that, But I also tell them for this claim, it's knowledge of the facts is with the possibility claim of the cost with the physical harm or with the life force of the malicious trespasser with the violation of this domicile's terms and of these conditions, 
with this correct sentence structure statement by this claimant. Meaning, if you come here, you ignore my warning and you maliciously trespass, you may pay with physical harm or even death. Meaning, if you come here uninvited and try to come in here or trespass, you're gonna pay with your life. This is all on here. And I filed this in with the local law enforcement. Suffice to say, never had any problems with them and uh, have a very good relationship with them, as a matter of fact. No problem, no problem. So those are some of the most important claims that I carry around as ship's papers in my briefcase. If I'm just going down the street to the store, I just carry this, um, which has my C Pass C Treaty in it, which has all my drogue timelines on it. C Pass C Treaty. I do have a license, but it's not my license. It's Michigan's license. And I tow it as a salvage. And I've paid the fee for freight in gold. And then, of course, you know, just for nostalgic purposes, uh, I carry this around, which is the business card that Colin David Eitzman Wynn, Colin Miller gave to me personally uh, during the time that uh, I spoke with him during the last year of his life. I carry that around. And of course, this, which is not mine. As you can plainly see, the name is all capped. But I have claimed it as a salvage and paid the fee for free on that as well. Then I carry around uh, my little business cards. And of course, gotta have some stamps. Which I got a whole bunch. Uh, these things, you cannot come by these things anymore. If you could see in color, these are blue $1 can't find those anymore. We've got blue two dollars. Got some registered mail. Got some uh, green cards for certified mail. Also got international return receipt. These are pink for international. And I always carry around one of these just in case. Only use those on the most important document, contract, postal bus, and court venues. Of course. Always carry around an ink pad for sure. Some spare envelopes. In case I need them. And, uh, yeah, those are about, those are the essentials. Of course, I carry a, a lanyard so that uh, if I need to put my C-Pass on here, I just put the C-Pass on here and carry it like that. But I very rarely do that anymore. It's kind of like the thing where uh, if you have closure on something, 
you don't have to walk around announcing it to everyone if you're confident with what it is you're doing. Although it is good to use flag protocol, if I'm going into, say, a military installation or a government installation, I will wear that to credential myself so that they know who I am. And if they don't know who I am and it's unfamiliar to them, I will explain it to them. So if, if I need to. But normally I don't, I don't wear a CPAS when I go anywhere. Do you carry around or have a fee schedule for your services? Services, there are no charges or fees for what I do, Sean. I navigate on a donation gift basis. And that's what keeps third party interlopers out of my business. Because if I would charge a fee, then that third party would give me problems. And that's just not something, I mean, I dealt with that in the beginning. I figured out how to navigate through that successfully. And the way to do it is to navigate on a donation gift basis. That's also the reason why everything I teach in my YouTube, I mean, everything I teach in my grammar workshops is available on YouTube for free, for free. All the knowledge that I teach in my curriculum is available for free on YouTube. So that's the other thing that's kept me safe. A lot of people try to keep things secret they want to put things behind a paywall. They share a little bit, but the good stuff they keep behind a paywall. I don't do that. But I can tell you, it's not the easiest thing in the world to navigate on a donation give basis because most people like it or not, most people just want free stuff. They think everything should be free. They don't think they should have to pay anything for, for anything, really. I had one guy say that education should be free, that all this knowledge should be free. And I reminded him, it is free on my YouTube channel, over 600 videos that I invested thousands of hours in creating. If you think it's worth something, feel free to donate. If it's not worth anything to you, then you won't donate. Do you keep your receipts for gifts and donations? I keep a log of everything that comes in and out of my port, for sure. I have written notes in a ledger of every single individual that I've ever spoken to in a consult, done a workshop with, or sent donations and gifts. It's all written down with notes. So if you've ever like contracted with me, I have your name in a ledger with notes next to you as to my impressions of you, uh, how things went, what your knowledge level is, if you decided to donate, what you did donate, you know, things like this. And I keep a record of that so that I can just punch in your name and it comes up uh, my notes for you or for whomever. And that's also how I can judge a character, you know, vet a character, how they, you know, the way they conduct themselves. Like for example, I have a, a guy that's been a on and off student for years. I think they did one workshop with me that I gave to them, I gifted them a workshop, meaning they didn't have to send me a donation or a gift. I just gifted them the workshop. And this was a couple years ago. And they always said, oh, you know, I'm going to sign up and, and do workshops. I'm going to send you a donation and blah, 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 because I value what you do. But they never did. <laughs> However, they would send 
uh, donations through YouTube every once in a while. And that tells me, I see that. It's like, okay, that person participates with rule one, rule equal. They're not just take, take, take. They're also willing to give what they can give. Because the value of a thing is what you put into it. If you don't value something, well, you're not going to invest anything in it, are you? Oh, no, Sean, actually, I was not referring to you as far as that example goes. That wasn't you. I was not referring to you. Although I do remember you, you were the one that won the, uh, the contest I did. Uh, I remember that. You and I did a workshop, and then you said, yeah, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> you said you were going to continue on. Your volition was to continue on with the workshops and so on and so forth, but you didn't. But you have remained a viewer, and I appreciate your viewership on YouTube, and I also appreciate uh, your viewership over here and your participation. But I wasn't specifically talking about you when I gave that example. That example was uh, from someone overseas. I'll tell you where I get a lot of students from is from uh, New Zealand and Australia. Matter of fact, I'd say the bulk of my students right now are from that area. I've had students in, uh, well, a lot of students also from Canada. Of course, from past tense United States, I have students from Denmark, Spain, Greece, Mexico, Portugal, I'm trying to think. The Caribbean. All over Earth. Interestingly enough, as we're doing uh, this live stream, I just got an email from someone, another disgruntled colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould, former cult follower. They emailed me and said that they started learning uh, grammar from colon Muriel hyphen Mita colon Biggs but that they weren't getting the closure that they desired and they weren't getting treated very well. And it's just very fishy and chaotic and shady over there in Russell J. Gould land. And so they contact me asking me uh, to attend the webinar I'm putting on on uh, August 8th, which they're more than welcome to because um, I did fill the quota for how many people I've wanted for the webinar, but only half of those people actually confirmed, which I knew would happen anyway. So enrollment is still open if you want to attend. What was that? Thank you. Thank you for the cap. I appreciate that. I think you're the first individual to ever send something to me during a live stream. So that's awesome. Thank you very much. For this claim, it's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the gratitude, with the gift of the Sean, with deception by this claimant and by this giftee, period. As you can see, I can also speak correct sentence structure off the top of my head, verbally. And in order to use this and be successful with it, it's highly recommended that you learn it to such a level that you can do what I just did. For sure. It's good to have confidence in your tools. So what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was saying about the webinar. So if you still want to attend the webinar on August 8th, feel free to contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Include your full correct name, please. 
I don't know what it is with people that send me emails and they just like, they don't put their name or they only put like their first name. I don't get that. Maybe it's just the way people are these days that, you know, with emails made things be very lackadaisical and things like that. I always use my full correct name when I communicate with someone in a written form. And I always put it at the end because authority comes at the end. I take jurisdiction over my words. People need to know that. I'm not going to say anything that I'm not going to stand behind. But people will send me an email. Hey, I want to learn. I just came across your channel. I would like to learn this. Can you help me? And then they don't put a name or anything. <laughs> so if you want to save yourself some trouble and a few extra emails, please include your full correct name. You know my full correct name. I just ask the same consideration from you. Rule one, rule equal. Well, this has been the best oh, live stream yet. Thanks in no small part to Sean. Thank you, Sean, again for that, those, uh, whatever those were, glasses. I feel like going skiing now for some reason. Uh, but I have to go take care of some bees. I'm a bee steward as well. I just put together four boxes and 16 frames last night, so I gotta go tend to some bees and get to it. But thank you again, Sean. I, I very much appreciate you being here, your comments, and your gifts. Hopefully in the next live stream, we'll get more of that type of participation because again, this, is, this TikTok is an experiment for me. I'm gonna stick with it for a few more weeks. And then uh, if it's worth my while to continue this and grow this channel, I will certainly do so. If it's not, I won't. I'll just stick to YouTube. Because again, as I've said, it's very hard for content creators to become successful across all platforms. Across YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Rumble, Instagram. Very few content creators are equally successful across those platforms but I'm definitely trying. Thank you for the mini speaker as well. All right, everyone. Peace. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the like button, turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.